am filming in my kitchen because the lighting seemed to be the best. So here is my wheel. I have an Ashford traditional wheel. Uh, this is also known as a Saxon wheel or a flax wheel. It is the smaller wheel, the one that you think of with um, Sleeping Beauty, with the great big wheel, with the nail on it that she, the, that she pricks her finger on, on the spindle itself. That is a walking wheel or a wool wheel. And that pointy part that she poked herself on in the fairy tale is what we now have as an orifice. Because a walking wheel does not have a bobbin on it. It has it like a nail that comes out here and the yarn winds onto the nail that sits here. So let's go over the parts of the spinning wheel. First, of course, we have the wheel, and then we have the wheel band. This is the drive band. It turns, as you can see, it's turning the bobbin. The treadle down below, as I tread it with my foot, turns the wheel. There is a mechanism on the back, which I will show you, that lifts that is controlled by the treadle, and that's what makes the wheel move. Now let's pull this a little closer, and I'll show you the parts of the wheel. When you're threading, when you are spinning, your yarn goes in through this hole right here. This is called the orifice. This entire structure here is called the maiden of all. I have no idea why, but that's what it's called. Uh, there's two poles like this, or pillars, they hold the bobbin. This is the bobbin right here. This is the fly. It spins around the bobbin. What this does is winds the yarn onto the bobbin. You can see I've got some fiber hooked to these little latches, or these little hooks. These little hooks just control where the fiber goes on the bobbin, otherwise it would all ball up on one side. So I usually start at this end or at this end, and as it starts to fill, I move it. It just keeps your, the yarn that you are producing evenly distributed onto the bobbin. Now on this side, right here, you'll notice these are called whirls. Here's the drive band. I have it on my largest whirl. There's three different sizes. They are attached, in my case, they're attached to my flyer. Um, they control how many, tw how many turns per rotation of the wheel. So I've got it on the widest one. If I put this on the smallest, which is right here, this is going to turn more times for every time that I turn the wheel. I've got it on the highest ratio, not the fastest. I have it on the slowest ratio right now. And that's where I tend to have it all, most of the time. Unless I'm spinning cotton, then I might move it to here. I think I've used this maybe once, but not very often. I usually use these two. Um, if I'm spinning cotton or silk, anything that has a short length fiber, I'm going to move it to here because I want it to spin a little faster. Now over on this side, you'll see there is a spring right here. This spring goes, it has a little fishing line. There, It runs over this side of the bobbin, this, this has a groove in it. it, runs over that, runs over to this side where it threads through this little latch here, and then it comes over to this little knob. Back there you can see the, the little fishing line. When I tighten this, this spring over here, there you can see the spring get bigger, that tightens my brake. That's what this wire is that goes, this fishing line goes over here. The brake actually serves so that the bobbin spins, but not at the same rate that this spins. It also controls what's called the uptake. The uptake is how fast the fiber, once you've spun it, how fast it's going to get drawn into and onto the bobbin. So if you have it, the brake set really tight, it's going to go whoop, really fast where if you have it set about even, it's going to go in about at this rate. So you can adjust that depending on how fast you're spinning. It's going to depend on how tight you want that uh, brake to go. Then we have the treadle down below. Here it is. This is what your foot goes on so that when you rotate with your foot, it 
it makes the wheel move. And you can see the bar in the back. That bar is attached, the one that's moving, it is attached to the foot pedal and it goes up and turns the crank and you can see the crank in the back moving which in turn turns the small whirl, turns the whirl which turns the flyers which spins your yarn. Now before I get started I do want to show you now this is my fiber that I'm spinning this is a roving I'm not spinning this entire chunk at one time I'm going to do what's called pre-drafting which means I'm going to take this yarn or this fiber, I'm going to split it down the middle a little bit so I have a smaller section to work with and then I'm going to pull the fibers out. Not all the way, but I don't want them spinning from a huge wad like this. This is called pre-drafting. When you kind of stretch it out a little bit, it just makes it a little less cumbersome to work with when you can do it like that. So you make it a little bit thinner and then you spin from this, mix it a little bit thinner and you can spin it from this amount. So let's get started with the different techniques of spinning. All right, here is my fiber. I have it coming out of the orifice to go onto the bobbin over here. Now there are three different techniques for spinning. Um, I'm going to show you two of the three. The third one I'm not real good at and I don't have the camera space to do it, but I will explain it. So the first one is the basic uh, spinning technique that, that uh, most beginners start with, and that's called a short draw, which means you're taking this hunk of yarn and you're just pulling it and feeding it into the orifice. That works. Um, you can get it fairly thin. I will demonstrate a little bit of that. So that's the short draw. Then there is the short backward draw. Now that is the one that I tend to use the most. What it is, is I am pulling the fiber apart between my back finger and my front finger. I'm pulling it out thin, letting a twist build up. Then I release this hand and the twist goes to the back. And then that feeds into the bobbin and I move the next. So let me demonstrate that for you. Now I am doing this at a much slower pace, so it's a little more difficult to spin than if I was going at full speed. Now the last technique is the long draw, which I'm not going to demonstrate because I can't get it onto camera, but what it is, is instead of spinning and holding my hands close to the orifice and close to the wheel, you actually, this strand is much, much longer. It's arm's length and you're holding your fiber way off, it would be way off camera for me to even try to demonstrate. You have to be a lot more experienced to do that. I'm not that experienced because you're having to really pull your yarn and it gets way ahead of you. So you're spinning from quite a ways out. The most I spin away from my wheel is probably about a foot and a half. And I'll spin and let that feed in um, so that would be the three different techniques for spinning. Now let me show you what's going on on my bobbin here. You can see right here the purple yarn that is going on right there. 
here it's coming through this hook it's going through there's a little hole right here called the orifice and it's coming out the other side which is where I'm spinning so it's actually feeding on this direction this white thread that is here is called your leader thread it's what you attach your beginning fiber to to get it to go onto the bobbin so I hope you found that helpful um, I tried to adjust my lighting the best I could uh, but I am in my kitchen it seemed to have the best lighting um, so I hope you've enjoyed my spinning tutorial and I will see you again on Saturday thanks again for watching everybody